Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Everton Daily Live Extra. Or Friday Live. Or Friday, or Friday Live. I mean, that's, if you want to call it a Friday Live, then call it a Friday Live. That's what, that's what's here. Okay. I mean, I mean, we're spitballing as we're, li as we're live. I mean, we're just, today. things are just coming off the top of our heads. Um, can we just start by just, uh, I just want to, we just want to send all our condolences and love to uh, Dave Witch from the Bobblers. His yeah. father sadly passed away overnight. Big Evertonian. Uh, big inspiration to Dave. So we just want to send all our love to him and condolence to him and the family straight off the bat. Um, yeah. Um, sad news. Uh, Everton last night with uh, Grand Guru, who are a fascinating uh, follow if, yeah, on Twitter. The they just tell you when people are advertising jobs. It's <laughs> yeah. a really, it's a really, it's a really unique little thing. But it's it's it, for us. It's good because it gives us a little insight on what's going on. Uh, they said Everton were advertising for a head of performance analyst and insights and a loan pathways manager. Mm -hmm. And it does seem, certainly with obviously the, off the back of the news yesterday, it looks like the academy director is uh, getting very close to being announced. Mm -hmm. The under twenty threes um, coach. Uh, under 18s situation is starting to be maybe become a little bit more clear in the next couple of weeks because obviously players are coming back. Um, it matters, and they coming back from uh, into pre season. Um, but those big ones, those two are are big, aren't they? They they are two big parts that um, we may have been neglecting in the last couple of years. Uh, maybe yeah, they are big. You're absolutely right. Obviously, we had the the Gareth Prosser news yesterday. Mm. He was someone who was at Wolves with Kevin Thelwell. Um, he left Wolves in 2018. Thelwell so gave him a glowing reference. Spoke very highly about him. Uh, and Everton have, have had lots and lots and lots of applications for the academy director. So if he's if he's got it, then quite clearly he's impressed. Mm. It's quite clearly a um, I think of trust as well, isn't it? You know, if Kevin Thelwell's worked with this fella before and he's good and he's got things in order at Wolves and, and what have you, then he's obviously, you know, he's done well. So that's, that bodes well because obviously he's got someone in place who he, he wants. Uh, and then that this news last night, like you said, off the, uh, the training ground guru or whatever it was, um, talking about a loans pathway manager, which I think is... Something that if you speak to the Piv regularly, he has been banging on about for a long time. Well, he was rather excited last night about the head of performance analysts and insights. Mm -hmm. When there that one go. came off, that's when he was like, about time, you know what I mean? And um, and then, so obviously the Loan of Pathways manager we've had uh, with Joe Royal doing it for mm. a while. Um, do, do, do you want to explain what a Loans and Pathways manager is? Just in case people don't know. Can I explain it? Um Basically, it's someone who is in charge of the loan and the pathways. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Good night. No further questions. Um, I mean, that basically is what it is. What it is, is it, it's about setting up a relationship um, within within the football pyramid for a start with other clubs. But when your players go out on loan, it's about being their, basically their port of call for anything um, that they're not happy about or what have you or just to let them know that basically Everton are still watching them and are still interested mm. in them rather than just shipping you off as a young player off to wherever mm. and then come back next May and we'll see how you've done mm. you know this is we'll have someone who will go and watch the games regularly be in touch with the club who's took them the player and be in touch with the player as well and, and then obviously if it's done correctly It'll be someone who sits down with Frank Lampard, Kevin Thelwell. Mm. Is it more and important that it's Kevin Thelwell rather than Frank Lampard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying, the only reason I'm bringing Frank yeah, Lampard yeah, yeah. into it is if it was someone like Jared Brantwaite, for argument's sake, you would say, and I don't have no idea whether it's Brantwaite to go out and loan, but if he, if he was going out and loan next season, you know, you would speak to the manager and say, right, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this player? What's his strengths? What's his weaknesses? Mm. Whatever. And... Do you see a situation where he will become a first team player for Everton Football yeah. Club? Um, and that you'll take that input from the manager, mm. but then obviously with Kevin Thelwell, then it's like, right, what, how are we doing this? How are we plotting this? What is the end game as well for this player? Is it, you know, I imagine, say, someone like Nathan Broadhead, mm. 
you know, Sunderland are very keen to take him. I personally don't think he's good enough to get in Everton's first team. No. So therefore, at the age of nearly 24, for me, if I was him and if it was his agent, I would be trying to get that deal shown yeah. up. Sunderland are a big club. They're back in the championship. Go and become their centre forward in the championship and, and try to get them into the Premier League. Um, so someone like him, I'm just using him for, for a, an example because he is someone who I think will move on. He's gone out on loan. He's probably not going to get a chance here. So let's make sure we can actually make some money off this player. Let's bring some money back into the academy and let's give this lad a football career. Yeah. Rather than having a situation where we've seen too many times where they sit on contract, miss the boat. Matty Pennington was the biggest one. Lad scored in the Merseyside derby. Yeah. Still sat on his contract for about another three years and then ended up at the age of 27 going to Shrewsbury. Luke Garbutt was another one. Mm. 27 by the time he left Everton. And yet, okay, Garbutt a few years earlier had had a little go in the, the team, but that was like 2014-15 season. It needed so you know I think that's that's the crucial point of, of having that loans and pathways is that it's done correctly you're giving you're helping the player because I don't think Evan have helped people in the past will that person act as a mediator as well with the the club that the player's on loan with to talk to them about what because it's got to be a two way relationship hasn't mm, it it can't course, just be yeah. you send someone on loan for their benefit or for our benefit there has to be a mutual benefit beneficial relationship doesn't it there's no point to play going on loan like we saw when brendan galloway went to west brom yeah, he gets yeah. there he sits on the bench all season mm. and it didn't do anyone any good no. did it so stalled didn't it then? so and it stalled his career didn't it whereas mason holgate went to west brom mm. and he was on you know he was on loan for half a season did really really well came back and, and sort of kicked on for a for a for a, for a time at everton um, so has that fella got to go to you know got to go into the opposition club the club where the player's gone to and you know and, and work out what's going to happen with that player and if he's not playing games work out why he's not playing games and maybe then speak to the player himself as a as a you know as a father figure maybe or putting an arm around them and saying this is what you need to do or this is what they're looking for because it's not always because what we find with football I think is I think everyone thinks that when a player is at a football club it's all nicey nicey mm. you know we've I, I, we've heard stories and you've watched documentaries where the manager doesn't even talk to some of the players doesn't even look at them and and if it's a player that he's been almost forced to take on loan sometimes it's just like you're not my player. I'm not. I have no interest. I've been because we know there is a lot of El Ghazi. there's a lot of politics in well, yeah, there's a lot of politics in football. We know that deals will be done to grease the wheels of certain organisations or certain things. So is that an important part of that role as well? Do you think? Yeah, hugely important. I think what's key in in the advert is Everton are asking for a UA for a licensed um, person applicant. Mm which is the top coaching thing. So not only, it's not just about an academic thing of mm. going, oh, yeah, I can pick up a phone and um, and speak to whoever. You know, it's actually someone, like you just said there, if, if they, he speaks to the coach or, or the manager at mm. a lower league club and goes, like, why is he not playing as much? Mm. And that coach goes, well, you know, he's, he's, he's like, he goes to sleep when the ball goes over his head or whatever, you know, whatever it can be. He's not good mm. enough in possession at the moment. Then that person can speak as a as a coach as well. Yeah. So because to get that qualification, it's the highest one you can get. Wasn't David Weir the loans manager at Brighton? And now he's the now the director, now he's the director of football. Mm. So it's obviously on the path it's their own pathway, isn't it? Well it's up it's up for upwardly mobile people. So it's for people who were going right, well I have done coaching. Yeah. Do I wanna actually be a coach? David Weir was a manager, wasn't he, for yeah. a bit? Do I want to Doesn't do that? always fit the skill set, does no. it? No, and it's like, I don't really enjoy that, yeah. so what else can I do? And he was assistant at Rangers for a bit. Am I really into the day-to-day -day stuff of coaching, mm. or do I want something where I can get me you know, a bigger pitch? And David Weir, don't forget, is an intelligent man. He went to university, didn't play professional football till he'd done his, finished his degree and all of that. Went to university in America, didn't he? Mm. So he's someone who obviously thinks about the game a little bit Educated differently. Little look at like look at Tim I'm saying Tim Kale's on yeah. exactly the same path as that, but look at Kale. Yeah. I don't see Tim Kale becoming a football manager. Well, also, Do you? No, no, and no, because I don't think he's got the temperament for mm. it. 
I just don't think he. I don't. No, no. I think he's a little bit more savvy. Look, you look. Mm. There's some players. I mean, look at the trajectory. Like I know it's slightly different, but look at like the trajectory David Beckham's taking. He the way you wouldn't. You wouldn't ever expect him to go into a dressing room and you know to and coach and stuff. No. But you, his demeanour and his business acumen means that you understand why he owns a football club and why because he puts all the deals. See, I'm I'm actually surprised Vincent Company has gone into that side yeah, of things yeah, because yeah. he took he when he was at um, when he was at City and he was taking he was doing degrees and stuff. Well, I, I thought he was going on the other side of the other side. Of he things. may still he may well do. And, and, and I'll tell you another one. I, I I'm a little bit, bit surprised with. Is Leighton Baines? I actually think that mm. other side, and that's only listen. That's not me obviously knowing the fella. That's me looking from the from the outside, outside in, looking at him yeah. going. He seems to be more of a fella who would do that kind of thing. Mm. I mean, we listen, we love our football documentaries, and we when you watch certainly the German ones, and now that you know the the Bayern Munich and and, the, and Dortmund, they just their whole clubs are run by ex players, but it's not always in the coaching. It's in the the football. It's you know you've got they, they'll give they'll. Rather have a player who understands a person, sorry, who understands the game in a in a management job, even if it's like nothing to do with football. They mm. would rather that fella's got some kind of understanding about the game. Mm. And if he goes on to be the finance director, so be it. Because if he's clever enough and he's got it, and I think I think maybe that's where you know we're just about starting to understand that in this country. It's you know it's it's um, football's changing in this country. Yeah, that, that last you know, and some clubs have got there before others. Mm. You know, Liverpool have, have done this really well. City were there before Liverpool mm. were there, and Brentford were there before maybe City were there. And there's lots of different ways to do it, and, and you'd have to you'd have to you'd have to optimize everything you can. Yeah. You know, and especially for a club like Everton, it will it, mm. just right now. It will be about marginal gains at the moment. You know, we're talking to John. He's talking about business side of it. And he, this, that, that, and so that, and that has to happen. David Maddox said the same. David Maddox, if you haven't watched the interview, it's out on Patreon. Um, was talking about, you know, Everton are ready to pop with what they've got. You know, there's a huge potential at Everton Football Club. Potential to take them into the top, I mean, this is his words, to take them into, like, the football elite. Because the, because of what's what's behind Everton and what the the potential is, but don't put the other stuff in place. You're not just going to get there because you've got a great fan base or your history was good. Got to work hard for it. You've got to work your bollocks off. You've got to circum navigate rocky waters. You've got to do it where people ahead of you have got more power than you because because they're already there. So how do you step over those people who are already there? Well, you're only ever going to do that by being clever. And by being smart, that's what Liverpool did. Don't get Liverpool are much better yeah. commercially than Everton. Don't get me wrong, and they were they were better commercially than Everton in 2015 when Klopp came in. But they still weren't doing what they're doing now no. commercially. Built, don't they? And what he did was Dave. Don't forget, Dave competed with Manchester City at a time, and City had a great run at it. Got themselves in an unbelievable position. Liverpool have been well, able. They have spent money, and they do no, have a no. high wage bill. So. <laughs> Uh, that's the way it is. I accept that, but they've also done very well to get to where they are. Ultimately, you have to when you talk about commercial and all that kind of thing. You know, you're only ever going to do better commercially if you're you are winning things or you're in the Champions League and all that mm, kind yeah, of thing. Of course, yeah. But I think yeah, you've got to service your own market. Everton don't service their own market. Never mind that expand the market, and that's the problem with Evan. Mm. Uh, I asked Andy the Piv mm. to describe what a head of performance analyst and insight. Did he say Does. Me? In in layman's terms, this is in layman's terms, right? Him. This is what he said. Yeah, he said, yeah. so it's essentially it's to manage all the performance data you have, so match physical, sports science, etc., to provide insights on players' performance and development. Also, team performance. Essentially, it's to highlight areas of improvement and also what's going well. So you would visualize things the first team do in terms of playing style and measure it against academy teams to try and get it more cohesive. You would look at physical data of players coming into the first team compared to senior. First First team players to see areas of improvements in terms of fitness, strength, and conditioning. You would use the insights to create data and physical benchmarks for recruitment position profile. They are examples. Thanks, and that's the layman terms. So my head's go. like, what? What? It's too hot. Makes sense, though. No, no, it does. Makes huge sense and makes you go, why the fuck are we doing this? But we, you can only. John Blaine, that's the thing, doesn't he? If you know, if wanted to go there, it wouldn't start from 
Cops and you know what I mean, and all of that. But we are where we are. Mm. You know, we are where we are. Ideally, yes, this would have been done ages ago. It hasn't, mm. so we can't keep going. Oh, imagine if that, and imagine if, you know, no, imagine no. if Machiri and Carlo would have come together at the same time and that big pot of money. Uh, or imagine if Frank these, had that now. Are these Ridiculous. examples right? So this is where this is where it gets interesting for me, and this is where I don't think there's any kind of clear definition of what's going on. But are these examples of Marcel Brands not understanding where football's going? Or are these examples of actually a club that meddled too much and was split and was giving people like David Unsworth too much power? And that's nothing against David Unsworth, by the way. But and now I've fully understood that actually they have to take their hands off or is it a bit of both? I think it's a bit of both Yeah, to be honest I think Marcel I wouldn't insult Marcel Brands' intelligence by saying he didn't know what he's doing because quite clearly he's done really well in Holland mm-hmm. and he's a clever fella as well he went and worked in banking for a year just to get an understanding of it of management and stuff so he's quite clearly got the intelligence he did well I think he was at AZ as well he did really mm-hmm. well at AZ Alkmaar so He's he's got game, so to speak. Mm. Where I think Marcel Brands tripped up was, I think he tried to apply. I you probably would do this, but it, it doesn't help. I think he tried to apply the Dutch way and that mm. Dutch mentality at Everton. So the players he was looking for, if we're just using the first team mm. as an example for us. You know, just to start with, the players he was looking for are technical footballers. Most of the footballers Everton bought on the brands are technical footballers. A lot of them didn't have mm. the basic tools for for what we needed in the Premier League. Probably drop most of them into good sides at the mm-hmm. top, and most of them probably would be able to perform. There might be one or two you'd go and on him really, but mm. a lot of like Alex Awobi could pr- could play in Manchester City's team. So he'd be brilliant. Because they have a lot of the ball and they use that he could have played in there and just you just go right the way through Bernard in a Bernard in Man City would yeah, have been yeah. brilliant, you know. And and say Gomez, he's at Barca, was good at Valencia. I can understand why Everton why he looked at him, but he didn't look and go. Gomez is really good on the ball, eh? but mm. is he? F- and and I guess with Gomez, Garner mm. probably didn't help this because Garner and him were quite good together because Garner was brilliant. So I think he was just buying for the wrong league. I think he, he, I think you put all of those players in to Marcel Brands' team in Holland. Mm. They probably all do quite well, and no one's really questioning. Then on the then, so as well as that, I don't know whether he was strong enough either off the mm. pitch. So if Bill Kenwright says, and I don't know if it's Bill Kenwright, I don't know whether it's Denise Barrett Baxendale. I know me money's on, and it, it, he does. It isn't a theatre an impresario. Um, if they say. Give David Unsworth that, and mm. give David Unsworth that. For me, he should have turned around and gone, no, <laughs> mm. because that's not with it. Yeah. Or maybe he thought David Unsworth was good enough. I don't know, but it's never a good idea to give important roles, two important roles to one person. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe. But you're making your own homework again. That's whatever they're greater. But I, I think just in terms of Marcel Brands, I think the real losers in this are um, flannels. They're about to open a flagship store in town, and uh, I think his losing his business yeah. could be a major be. Ma- major economical downside for, the, loved, for the city. He loved the tight top. He did. He was still knocking around Liverpool until quite recently. I don't know whether he's actually gone out now. <laughs> yeah, he has. He's done a new job at uh, PSV, isn't he? So, yeah, be but interesting it, to see how he gets on. No, it will, but he, listen, he, he'll probably do really well. But Kevin Felwell's come in, and, you know, within the space of, what, four months, looks like he's already, he knows what he wants, and actually because of what's happened at the football club, has the power to, 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 to get things going. She could be the perfect storm for Everton in a positive sense. You know, we used that phrase quite a few times last season and at the other end of the table, but... He might actually benefit from the meddling. Hmm? Because quite clearly there was meddling. Yeah. Quite clearly, because the club was in a bit of a mess, there was boardroom in fighting. Farad Mishiri, you know, if if you want to believe what you told them and what the club had briefed us on, and they've had a meeting with 
with Farad at back in January and said, well, we all need, you know, we need to do things differently and we need to let the process carry on. And obviously spoke to Tim Cahill at length and maybe Cahill said, look, you know, get someone in and let them just get on with it. Mm. Don't, you know, you just be there to support them, but let them get on with it. And maybe Kevin Thelwell's come in at that, just at the very right time where people are prepared now to go, mm. actually, yeah, you go and... But Kevin Thelwell has got experience at Wolves. Lots of experience mm. at Wolves. He's done the coaching. He's, he's moved to the director of football. He was he was something else I, in between. I, I, then he went to Red Bulls. And he's I think the stuff he's done at Red Bulls is probably well, equally as important because and he's had two years there. Different market, different different exactly. um, way of doing things. Mm. Certainly, as it's a for Red Bull, the path you know now we're seeing. Well, he had the youngest roster. I no, but I think it. I think not only that though. I think the fact that we will start to see in the next few years these multi-clubs now organisations is going to be a big thing you know I think someone I think Andy might have said the other day Southampton only are buying two clubs you Andy. know one in one in France and one somewhere else you know what I mean That that's what's starting to I happen. know Andy's Andy's hopeful if this can, if the new consortium comes in they'll buy another club well yeah and I think because that's the way it's going unfortunately we you can't be you've got to have that sort of way of looking at things and Kevin Farewell has already got experience we've seen players leave the Red Bulls and go over to like Salzburg and then and look you look like Jesse Marsh is it's a jeopardy mm. of you know the the he managed the three Red Bull clubs didn't he I think um you know and now he's in the Premier League mm. um so yeah he has done the three yeah. you know and and you you have the players going for I mean even just even you know the players you see going from one to the other so it's an interesting way of doing things and if Everton could get it right it does allow players to have somewhere to go um and play in a league go on loan obviously so uh, but you do things like you can get work permits and everything mm-hmm. by doing things that way can't you if you're clever with it so it'll be interesting to see obviously if Everton do get taken over by a consortium mm. and what they do with it but it's good to see I think at last that Everton seem to be getting things together off the pitch mm. uh, and Kevin Thelwell does seem to you know there's been more changes in the last few months than there has been for a few years so mm-hmm. he seems to have really got things together and, and by by the first of July because I know that's when they, they say they want it sorted uh, in terms of the loans pathway manager and stuff like that because you'd want them in then because the, the, basically the players are back yeah, and, and it? you start then going actually Frank are you using him any any issue with him going out on loan mm. and then they can because you want to get you want to get those players out on loan at their club as soon as possible. Really, if yeah. they're going out, you want them in pre-season. And well, you want them. You want them. In. You know, just from a pure layman's terms, you know, if a club are looking for an option mm-hmm. and not just an afterthought. You know, if it's, obviously we've got Championship clubs there and League One clubs. Mm-hmm. Everyone's struggling financially. Awesome. If there's a player there and they they're looking for a player, and they think, oh yeah, we've got the centre back here mm-hmm. or whatever. We take him for a year, you know, and he then he plays, and that's the most important thing. Whereas, what I always think is when you when you're arsing about, mm. and you're leaving it till like August, and pre- people have already had pre seasons, and then they've you know, already, already got, got players idea, established, yeah. and they've already got a player in. They go, well, we might just bring this one just for one more. We've been offered them by Everton, they're going to pay his wages, blah blah blah. And it's like, yeah, but they're not really part of the plans, are they? They've got to force their way in, and you've already got maybe a bit of a click where people are like you know oh no no this is my I, I got it yeah get them in early get the get it sorted and especially at a position like centre back yeah or it's whatever quite, it's quite difficult though to do you mess with your centre backs once you've got the partnership yeah. established I think the lower down you go there's no rotation so what I mean they just they get the one they want they get it work on it and that's how it is so if you're sat on you come in in August late August Lewis Gibson's seen this mm. come in late August you're not playing. You're on the bench for a few months. You get a game, you get injured. Because yeah, you, you, you haven't like the season. Right. And then you're struggling. Mm. So hopefully, hopefully things will benefit mm. um, and we'll keep doing what we're doing. And Kevin Thelwell will be allowed to get on with this job because then if you truly allow him to get on with this job, then he can truly be judged. He's accountable. If you keep, if you keep ducking in and going, do this and do that, and you're not an expert on it, then you, once you start meddling, 
Äh, Gary Bolz ist Haldi, an die Bolz ist, ob das Schaffi ist, Jace ist auch halb als die Schwalex. Dean ist der Jurita Mike Gauthred, about the takeover. Yeah, yeah. very, very interesting. interesting. Very interesting, but also also very plausible in this world. A little bit too natty, very but very plausible, but also wildly speculative. Yeah, but well. of course it's it is. If you and know, I've seen some people go, oh my god, I didn't realize that. That's you know, what if you it go, is. Listen, if you go down, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like if you take the wrong path on ante- and ancestry dot com, mm-hmm. you you find out like the queen was your great 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 grandmother. You know what I mean? It's all that kind of thing. So obviously not this queen, this queen. But yeah, you know, a yeah, queen. Yeah, yeah. You know, it is that thing of like, well, if you go this way and go that way, mm. you'll find that. It's so. But, but, yeah, it was interesting. It is interesting. It was interesting. And nothing surprised me, by the way, in this world anymore. Of course not. Um, Bainey says, hotel and patron night booked. Can't wait. Still tickets uh, available for right. pay for our page, third patron night. Get it done. Get it, get it in. Get it in. Get it done. Uh, Peter Finn says, how many clubs are called Everton in the world? About seven, isn't it? I think. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Quite go. a few in South America. There you go. Uh, Kev Rex, big T, says, uh, Love the interview with David Maddox. Bar's very professional job. Uh, got to say the channel's going from strength to strength. Since oh, I thank you. A patron. It's great to see. I think it's about time Everton, the club, started to appreciate you guys too. Who knows if there's a takeover, maybe you'll be involved in the media side somehow. We'll just keep plugging along, mate. Still. Keep trying to get the accreditation. See what happens. Mm. See what happens. Uh, Kev also says, quick question. Which Kevin Thelwell connections to Red Bulls do you guys envisage Everton ever becoming Red Bulls? I think he said with. He meant with. Remember do I ever... Yeah, we spoke about <laughs> this. We spoke about this in like 2004, 13, on no, our yeah, radio 12, show. 13, yeah. We were talking about it. It's yeah. quite funny. Um, yeah. Everton becoming Everton RB. Nah. No. Nah. Red in the name, on it? If they if they turned around and went We'll you know, we don't want Red Bull in the name, but we want to run you, then you never know. Of course, you can never say never. But that would then probably go up against what they are, wouldn't it? They're all Red Bull, everything. So well, Leipzig are not though. They're RB. Well, they're they're, RB, they're yeah. not, not allowed to be Red Bull, are they? Because of the never rules. Know, then. You never, obviously, you never know, do you? They'd have to be interested, though, wouldn't they? In doing it. And maybe they would be, because the Premier League, as we, you know, as David Maddox said, and, and John Blaine said the same thing. And Premier League football clubs are, are mm. sought after. And the opportunity to invest in them doesn't come along very often, because a lot of people keep them, and especially mm. established ones. You know, we're not talking ones that are a Premier League club for 12 months and then get relegated again. You know, you're talking about the second longest running Premier League club, um, top flight club, obviously with a team that's played the most top flight seasons ever. So the history's all there. And we're, a, we're a, like I said, we're a very well-established top flight club. The opportunity to invest in that when it's two years from a brand spanking new stadium with everything that that brings on the banks of the Royal Blue Mersey. It's a big opportunity for someone and whether someone like Red Bull would look and go, oh, they actually for sure. But then, they might be able oh. to call it the Red Bull Arena, but they could call it the Tolerosa. So, you know, there's opportunities for the, for people. I mean, they, if you've watched the you've watched the interview, haven't you, Kev, because you just said, so you heard David saying, you know, there's... There's others who are, in, who are interested and actually, in his opinion, they're actually more likely to buy it than what the Peter Kenya one is. So, mm. obviously, none of us can say that fully, but from what he's heard, John Blaine's said he, he knows of consortium sniffing around. We've heard that ourselves. There's a few there, so we'll see. We'll see the opportunity, like I said, to invest in Premier League real estate, as they call it now, is a... Uh, Mm. Is very, very um, enticing to these hedge funds and these people, billionaires and Middle East interest as well. So, you know, this could just be the start of of the race, really, and we'll see who comes out on top. Because um, yeah. you, you, you wouldn't say one way or the other, would you, at the moment? You wouldn't go, it'll be Peter Canyon's consortium, definitely, because... 
he might just be trying to, as that thing pointed out, trying to get into gold in Uzbekistan or maybe, whatever it was. Maybe. You never ever know. You never ever know. Kev said, oops, schoolboy error, there's red in the name, what an idiot. Well, no, because if it was just RB, like Pez just said, and he couldn't use RB, it was just RB Everton or Everton RB. Or maybe would even if they like the RB well, even if they bought us and this would do we would you even tolerate the stadium called being called the Red Bull Stadium? Yeah, that's Red Bull. It's a it's a no. I'm just I'm just asking, a, yeah. I'm asking. It's a brand. I'm just asking question. Just asking question. It's a brand. Wouldn't bother them if they paid huge amounts of money for it. Fair enough. I just it just could never be in our name, obviously. Mm. Very much. There so. you go. Very it's much. very warm today. I'll do another refresh, but the comments are very quiet. People are. I've got better things what to about do. YouTube does loads of comments on YouTube. Oh, sorry, I haven't gone into YouTube. <laughs> Just pates and all. I mean, there's a million comments on YouTube, but I don't know why. Um. On YouTube. Hmm? Yeah, of course. That'll be why. That'll be I, why. That'll yeah. be why, wouldn't it? Uh, Eugene says Everton begins search for loans. We have done that one. Trophy boy says Hardy lads. Uh, do you think we will? seek to increase the capacity of Bramley Mother. I think so yeah I mean it would be f- team foolish not to wouldn't it It would. I, I know I understand I understand that the footprint is not very big and obviously once you've got the shape of a stadium and everything's down but then Tottenham increased theirs about four times mm, once did. you've got the planning permission in place and the stadium's getting built what are they going to say if you go I want another 4,000 seats this is how it's done now we'd all absolutely love Everton to get to to get to sixty thousand. Mm. So far, the only way we've been told that can be done is through changes in say in in rail rail seating. But even if rail seating was allowed, we had rail seating, which obviously is allowed. Um, we still would only have a one to one thing, so it wouldn't give you any more. There must be somewhere. There must be parts of that stadium where you can get an uh, uh, you know two seats in for one. You know things like that. So, does that mean you can put an extra seven and a half thousand on, or seven, just over seven thousand? I don't know. Mm. But listen, they might have built it. We no, no. We, you know, you can look at the plans all you want, but have, has anyone ever seen the plans and counted every seat, and then gone into the width of you know? At the end of the day. The place can be built, will be built without seats. Mm-hmm. And then it'll all come down to the width of the seats or there might be a little bit of room here, a little bit of room there. But I know for and we know for a fact that I think Spurs got something like seven or eight thousand in extra, I think. Something like that. It went up it went up like three thousand at a time. And he kept on putting in for more planning permission for more and more and more. And I think now that you know, you imagine in the last year and you're seeing it's a concrete bowl and and Everton go we want to put an extra bit in here and I'll mm. put an extra bit there, then I can imagine squeezing up. Whether we ever get it to that 60,000, I think that we all want. That's the, that's to me, that to me is like the number that puts you in the higher echelons, doesn't it, of yeah. of, of, of Premier League attendances. Mm. Um, I know there's a school of thought in business that you, you, you want a level of... Um, People not going the game that that creates the hottest season that sounds, makes the ticket yeah. and everything. There's also the thing with the season tickets as well, having less season tickets and more walk ups. I just think gets I just think get it to sixty thousand and and I think that'd be a, a good benchmark for us. I think that I think that's where I think I think that's achievable. I really do personally. Well, I think the the size of the seats what went in the seat could be reduced. There's still yeah, yeah. the size that have gone in are massive compared to Goodison, but they could be reduced. And you could get three thousand extra seats in the mm-hmm. end without even making any real massive changes to it straight off the bat, and that'd give Everton fifty six thousand on day one, which is a better one. Mm. Yeah. And 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 and, and of course that we we've do, we've done our little bit of research on the, obviously on safe standing, and there are lots of videos on the channel if you want to have a look, and. You know there are rules. It's one for we've only just got it. That see, that's another thing, isn't it? You have that will come in slowly but surely. The the thing is, it's like one for one at the moment. So there's one person to one seat. Mm. Whereas in Germany, it it can. Is it two for Dortmund? Is it, there's two for one. Two for one. So basically, it's two people. 
So there's like in the on the yellow wall. Ooh, we stood there once. I don't know if anyone knows. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like <laughs> there's a seat, and then there's a step in front of the seat, and basically it's like a split step. So the way the way to think of, so one person stands there and then the other person stands in front of them, and then it creates this like this tier system, doesn't it? And it's it, it makes sense if you're on it. I think if, when you think about it, going two two people to one seat, but there's no seat there. That's the mm. way you got to think about it. The seat's locked up. What we've got in this country so far with that with this rail seating isn't true. It's not real because in this country the legislation hasn't been changed yet. That we have to have a seat, don't we? Mm. In Germany, they lock the seat into the thing, so it becomes a proper terrace. And also, that can all come down because in Champions League games, and we were there, weren't we, when we were filming? We were filming on the Monday, and it was just full of a crew getting it changed for the Champions League mm. on the on the, on the Champions Wednesday League. because you can't have. So they were changing it from a terrace to put to locking the seats in. It was an incredible um, thing that they do, but but they think it's worth it. Whereas in this country, we probably go, oh, we can't be bothered. Um, so well, they lock they lock the seat up, mm. and then it becomes that two step system. So it's two people for one seat, and it and it was brilliant. It worked. It was un- unbelievable. Well, Everton have put in the ratio for one point five, haven't they? One to one point five. That's what the ratio. So that would yeah. that be like me being one and be you being the zero point five? Half, yeah. Uh, so they put that's what they put in. So obviously, it's big. So the way that would work would be like. Um, the overlap of the extra person, mm, wouldn't it? Yeah. So you get, you can, you, you're obviously fit more people in that way by doing it that way. So it, it's in place. It's in place. It's whether they do it. Cam's in the comments. Hello, Says Cam. Here, Believe Ned's currently being sold off. <laughs> I can't even. We can't even tell you where Ned is. It's brilliant. He's being I, sold I off. I don't think legally we're allowed to no, say where he is. Um, and Paige is not here either. No. It's just me and Bass. No. Coming it's in on Friday. I've just been. The, I've just been the gym where Harry the little made up you've got a fever what you did to me today horrible man you asked him to do I it I know I did I must have oh, did. I did ask him to put it there yeah. Ash <laughs> Ashwood says hey, good evening from Australia met Hello. Ped at the Leicester game in the street and top fella there you go Ice Coffee 13 says you can just see Everton buying another club and they end up winning the league and end up in the Champions League. <laughs> Imagine. Hello. Uh, Tazul says uh, UG guys thinks better Calvin Ramsey or Nathan Patterson. Patterson, but I think Ramsey, I think we were smart this yesterday because obviously the Red Men, I was talking to them about it. I think Ramsey's only 18, isn't he? Mm. And he's a good player, but they don't need him to be ready right now because they've got one of the best attacking right backs out there so they don't need him to be ready right now they've got like three or four years to to progress him we need Patterson to be ready and I think that's the difference we looked at Ramsey but I don't think he was quite ready and obviously with that crossover with Seamus Coleman we needed someone who was and, and let's be honest, Patterson isn't really hasn't played that many games to be to go always ready. But yeah, I think yeah, age yeah. and fitness and international experience size means, and size means that he's ready to go into our first team next season. You would have liked him to have had half a dozen games or un, or already under his belt, but that's not there. And I think th- there will be crossover with him next season. I think that's the difference. Ramsey looks a hell of a prospect, but how many games is he going to get at Liverpool? You know. But they can take the time. That's of what I'm Cardi. saying, and that's why they've gone for him. They can just take the never. time of them. He's not gone at house since Alexander Arnold, unless so, they move, unless they move, move his position. Field, but just right now, he's not getting moved because he's their chief creator. So they can just take the time with Ramsey. Ramsey can play in the Carabao Cup, mm. probably the FA Cup. If he waltz through the Champions League group, he may play in the last Champions League game if he makes the squad. So they, it's it's a different thing for them. They can just take the time. They can take chances with these people. We're we're not in a position to take. I mean, I personally would have still bought them, but I'm at the both of them. But there you go. Uh, Hugh McDonald said, "Did you guys see the Ash podcast Athletic Journalist saying that it's a question of when we are sold?" But four or five sources saying it's another group, not Thornton. Well, we've got. I spoke to David Maddock from the Mirror yesterday. Um, when will that be out on YouTube? Tonight. Tonight. So look at that because he's David Maddock was a lot of what he said was really interesting regarding the takeover. So check that out. 
on YouTube tonight. Um, this was an interesting one from Gareth. Hi guys, I've really been wanting to ask you this question. What would you say will be a good season for us this year? I say top 10 this year, then next year Champions League. Do you agree? That would be an amazing two yeah. years, wouldn't yeah. it? But I also don't feel it's very realistic. No. I think... Top um, 10... Top 10 is achievable because there's a I'll, lot of teams right, who are stuck. Me, but can we just say the year later... Can we say no getting to 50 it. points <laughs> this season would be a good season? It would be a good start. I think that getting to 50 points would be a good season. Yeah, personally, we've got it. We don't know what the team will look like. You know, sixteenth might be a good season when the transfer window shuts. Might not be. It's dead hard to say. Oh, with this squad, I think we can do this. If no one was sold, and you said to me we're gonna in general be all right with injuries, we'll still get some. But in general, we're gonna be all right. Then top ten's more than achievable. But. This squad of players, I don't think, will be intact by the end of the transfer window. I.e., I think one of our front two will go. It's what you do with that money, then are you replacing? So, but because the league's the way it is, top ten is always achievable because you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, Champions League the year later, I would say is. Mm. Just, I'd say, and I'm, you, anyone who watches this knows that I am quite positive. I'd say there's practically no chance. I'm having getting in the Champions League within the next two years. Be tough. It'd have to be like a Leicester year where we didn't get any injuries and everything went our way. Mm. Really, that's how that's how you would get there. It's not obviously it's not impossible because West Ham probably really should have got Champions League last season. We beat them at home. We wouldn't mm. have beat them at the London Stadium. They'd have probably got in the Champions League. Yeah, but that was a bit of a... That was that weird season. No, but I'm, that's what I'm saying. And you, these seasons occasionally do pop up, don't mm. they? Leicester have oh, had yeah. two, two final days on the run mm. to get in the Champions League, yeah. didn't they? But then, got, then get to a semi-final of a European competition and end up finishing, what, eighth, was it? Eighth and ninth or something, yeah. So won a few games at the end, didn't mm. they? So... Um, OK... That. John Jones says top 10 is our top top place ok Toffee Boy says if only we had the infrastructure this infrastructure set up 5 years ago we wouldn't be in this mess mm. absolutely yeah absolutely Kevin says eh, alright lads report today saying Tottenham won't meet Richie's asking price I've seen one today saying that Chelsea are more likely to sign him now than what Spurs are mm. go, go and get it, get it done then Get your bed in and get it done. Mm-hmm. Let let us have Lukaku. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Gallagher. <laughs> Kaku won't know. We'll, we'll have Gallagher. Now, listen, if you're going to do it, come and do it. Get it. Come and do it. Get it done quickly and, and we can get on with what we're doing. Don't really want it to drag on, do we? Mm. It drags on doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help them and it, it, it certainly doesn't help us. Um, so, we'll see. It's going to be an interesting... Interesting summer, that is for sure. Mm. Um, <laughs> just seeing something there. Uh, Tez says, what about Burns Orange Bull FC? Yeah, strawberry Bond mm. Bull. Works. Um, Mills says, uh, gone are the days of bluekipper.com being our best place for fans. Keep up the great work, guys. Nice one, mate. Uh, Paul Callow says, watched the film about time the other night. Uh, couldn't unsee that main character. Uh, Dom Old Gleeson a dead ringer for Ned <laughs> he is he is he is well he's just ginger isn't he but yeah he is yeah yeah. Uh, and also Go says film, also like, says gents you have any thoughts on the song Escape the Pina Colada song uh, which of the couple should be the most pissed off when they finally meet the one you well, always talk same, about isn't it the same couple yeah so, so they're just one? cheating on each other yeah so we're saying which one should well, they be both, more they... there's one instigator can't think of no, them. both of them. Both of them are both of them are cheating. They're cheating on each other, yeah, no, and then not. they find each other through, and then they go, and it's yeah, it's just wrong. Mm. It's wrong on many levels. Okay, there you go. So basically, they both should be. They should just leave each other. Yeah, if they're not, and, happy. Uh, if they're not happy, you know, they should leave each other. Mm. Okay. 
John Crellan says off subject, lads, but I'm at Anal Field next week for the Eagles concert. You know how difficult it is to get away from these things. Apparently four hours to get away from the killers last week. Can you recommend me somewhere to park? The, where kid, I can the killers play on for last week. The killers didn't play from on the field. killer last week. Dingo played there last week, didn't he? Um, Stone played there Stones? last week. From the killer, I don't know. If you can, you recommend somewhere where he can park and get away quickly. I don't know. Where, I don't field. know what you're doing. I don't know whether he was. He, is he staying in Liverpool? Is he staying in town? I don't. I, you know, you're not giving me the options, are you? Really? I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. I what I'd probably do it. I don't know. I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably like just walk away from Manfield and get onto a main road and then get a, call an Uber there. What you don't want to do is call an Uber by Anfield because you get penned in. It's better to walk. Where can, walk he, to pa- Goodison. Where can he park by Goodison? Oh, are you parking? Mm, um, and then get away quickly, ish. No, I don't. I don't think you could. I don't think you could. I'd park maybe somewhere far away and then get a new get like get an Uber there or something. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Brian says, is there no way we can dictate a deadline for transfers to Levy or whoever? Or do we just have to say nothing and have our belly tickled? Drags on equals just scrambling about. You can't, I, I, just, I don't know how you can force Depends someone. Depends on your leverage is, doesn't it? I just don't know how you can force someone to buy someone. If they say, we want them. And don't forget, Spurs haven't bid anything. But if they said, we want them and we're prepared to pay 50 million and Everton say 60 million. Then theoretically, they can just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait mm. till September the first, and go, "We'll give you sixty million for them." Mm. Can we're not in the we're not in the driving seat, are we? For it, I personally would try to give them a date, but then it's you blinks first. Then mm. you go, listen, if you haven't bought them by July the first, we're not selling them. Simple as. I don't know whether Everton have got. I don't know whether Everton have got the financial um, power to be able to do that. We need that. We're, we're dependent on the money to do what we need to do. So uh, Tazil says any truth from the Mateus Nunes rumours. I don't. I just know we liked them last season. And we could have got them. We could have got them, and we didn't. Um, I don't know. I don't know. John says, Baz, how many bands do you know that are playing at Glastonbury? I honestly, I haven't, I haven't seen the lineup, uh, and I'm, I, I've got probably less interest in Glastonbury than I have of having a Liverpool season ticket, to be honest. Um, but I imagine John, I'd probably be like you and know about ten, ten names if you give me like the list of who's playing. I'd, I'd be probably made up to know ten. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, Phil Gallagher says, "Come on, lads. There's 400 plus watching. Get the likes up." There you go. And um, Reese says, "Seems the club's finally going in the right direction. Let's hope we have a good season and build on it." And John G says, "Our PSG not still sniffing around with Charleston. No. Doesn't seem to be, does they're, it? They're, they're Co- everything's changing uh, at PSG, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think if Mbappe would have gone, it would have been a different story." They've got a new sporting director. They're getting a new manager. Everything's changing. But you? Exactly. There you go. Right. We're done. It's roasting. And there we've got another couple of videos mm. to do. So, yeah. There you go. Um, mm-hmm. Paul says, when is the next AOB coming out there? It's genuinely the funniest videos out there. When Ned isn't doing other things. Yeah, today. Ned's got to yeah. be in. Oh, John that says. That could be honest, AOB. Yeah, John says the killers were at Manchester. I was oh, just talking in general because okay. I'm driving in from the north. And Bainey the said, uh, what do you think, 40 million plus Gallagher for the Charles? They're not going to give us... F- That'd be nice. That would be nice, but, but it's not going to happen. I can't see that happening. Right, take it easy, everyone. Have a good weekend. David Maddock interview is out on YouTube later on. Check it out. It's roasting and we're going. See you later.